Why does Richie serve Uncle Jimmy a chocolate banana? How many Taylor Swift references are there in the bear? What will happen next with Richie? We'll be covering these questions and a lot more in this video. Welcome to Square Eyes, a channel where we recap, review and take a sideways look at your favourite TV shows. I'm doing something a little bit different in this video. Rather than looking at individual episodes, I'm going to take a deep look at a specific character and see how they developed over the course of the season. I've chosen to look at Richie in Season 2 of The Bear because I think there's a lot to talk about with him. Let's jump straight in. Richie starts the episode out of step with the rest of the characters. Everyone else is excitedly predicting the cost of the refit of the new restaurant, thinking about the exciting new future ahead. But Richie's in the basement, looking over pictures of his dead best friend and living in the past. He then draws Carmi into a reluctant discussion about purpose, where he describes a character of a book that he's reading, who is being left behind by his friends. This character has no skills or personality, and his friends all move on to better things and cut their friend out of their life because he has no purpose. Richie feels like he's just the same as that character. He's 45 years old and drifting through his life, while everyone around him seems to know what they're doing. The next time we see Richie is when he starts shouting at Sydney for tearing the Fenway Stadium poster that's been hiding the hole in the wall. Rather than being embarrassed that one of his botch jobs from the past has been exposed, he's upset that piece of the restaurant's past has been damaged. He then uses some anti-Semitic language to describe an attempt to burn down the restaurant to defraud the insurance company. He tapes the picture back together and lovingly puts it back in place, showing how attached he is to the past and his memories. In the second episode, Richie gets into a needless argument with Fack about the right way to scrape the walls. It's not really about the scraping, though, and more about who's in charge, with Richie wanting to exert control despite the fact Fack seems to know what he's doing. The argument is settled with Fat going to Sugar, Carmi's sister who is project managing the renovation, and she tells Richie to stop bossing people around. It's obvious from Richie's argumentative attitude that he's not in a good place at this point, and he's taking it out on the people around him. Richie says it because he's trying to assert himself as the alpha male, and it's to do with leadership, but it looks more like he's having a breakdown. Then Richie's there when the lock is broken off Mikey's locker, and they look inside. It seems appropriate that Carmi gives Richie the only item inside the locker, the hat, while Carmi's looking to the future and moving forward. At this point in the season, Richie is stuck in the past and looking backwards, so it's most likely that he'll be interested in memories and keepsakes like this. Later in the episode, we get another confrontation between Fack and Richie, where they uncover some mould on the walls. Fack wants to let Sugar know straight away, but Richie tells him not to call Mum, and tries to play it down. It seems like Fack is going to raise the alarm, but he denies it when in a later scene Sugar asks who called the mould guy. This all sets up one of the most slapstick moments in the season, when Richie insists that there's no mould problem, because if there was, the ceiling would fall down when he bashed it which he then demonstrates and the ceiling immediately comes down on him. The bear is described as a comedy drama, and I sometimes wonder where the laughs are, but this is a pretty funny moment. As they're sweeping up the mess from the ceiling falling down, Richie admits to the fact that he did the right thing to anonymously call the mould guy, which Fack denies again. Marcus then confesses that it was him that made the call. Fack and Marcus bump fists to confirm their alliance, but the camera moves in on Richie as he props himself up on the wall and smokes his cigarette, and he looks completely broken at this point. In episode 3 we see a different side of Richie, when he's with his daughter, but he also can't help but use her as a source of information about her mum, and we get a sense that he's a bit of a deadbeat dad, as she also reminds him that he has to pay his child support, suggesting he's a bit lax on this side of things. But in spite of this stuff, you get a sense that he's a good and caring dad. Other than being in the background when Sydney and Carmi squabble about knocking down a wall in the kitchen, there's not much more of Richie in episode 3. Richie shows his delight about Sugar being pregnant at the start of episode 4, when the wall unexpectedly falls down just as she's breaking the news to Carmi, but then we don't see much more of Richie, as most of this episode is given over to Marcus's trip to Copenhagen. However, we do get a nice scene of Richie and Fack having an argument about the gas pipes not being safe. This just lets us know that Richie is still not pleasant to be around and is struggling to cope with all the changes going on in the restaurant. In the fifth episode, we see another example of Richie's current mindset. When Uncle Jimmy comes in and shuts Richie down when he tries to speak, he feels completely helpless, but instead of standing up for himself, he lets it stew, and then in a later scene, he blows up at Sugar, calling her Natalie and demanding to know why they're letting Uncle Jimmy accuse them of wasting his money. He then says that she's got to trust him if they're going to be partners, completely seriously, despite the fact that he's in no way a partner in the restaurant. I think this shows that Richie is desperately reaching out for respect that he hasn't earned and doesn't deserve at this point in the season, just like when he's trying to boss around Fack. He's played for laughs, but it's also quite sad because it's part of a sense of purposelessness that he talked about at the start of the season. Later in episode 5, we see Richie in an even more agitated state, when Kami comes back from his date to find him in the middle of a heated argument with Sugar, he was trying to steal electricity from the neighbours to solve the power problems. Richie feels aggrieved when Kami tells him to go home, but it's pretty clear that he's the one that's in the wrong, and his behaviour is out of control. Sugar tells Kami that he's got to do something about Richie, which may be what leads to the events of episode 7 of this season. Episode 6 is just an outstanding hour of television. It's unbelievably tense and stressful, 
but Richie's part in the episode is actually not quite as blood pressure raising as the rest of the scenes in the episode. His storyline produces some of the more relaxed and tender moments in the episode, which otherwise feels like a heart attack, once again putting Richie at odds with the rest of the family. Because the episode takes place in the past, we see Richie back in a much happier place, where he's still with Tiff, and they're happy in their relationship. He also seems to be the only one in the household to get a laugh out of Carmi's mum Donna all episode. She's a ball of seething rage from start to finish, but Richie comes in and starts tickling her, and she actually seems to find it funny. This little moment shows that Richie's the same kind of lively character at this point, but seems more fun-loving and joyful than the character we've got to know in the present day. We also get to see Richie and Michael together, when they tease Carmi about Claire, telling him that they saw her and tried to set them up together. They bounce off each other and have a natural rapport, which kind of makes sense of why his death hit Richie so hard, that they seem like a double act. Richie then takes Tiff the sprite that Carmi made her, and they have a chat while she's lying down. When they talk to each other we see that Richie is a completely different person, calmer, more reasonable, but still not where he wants to be. They want to move to a better neighbourhood, and Richie's worried about whether their daughter will like them. But the thing I got from the scene is that they're two people that care for each other and talk to each other nicely. Almost nobody else speaks with any proper affection to anyone else in the rest of this episode, so this scene between Richie and Tiff really stands out as an oasis of calm in an otherwise chaotic and stressful episode. Another thing we see from Richie in this episode is him trying to progress his career by working for Uncle Jimmy. He begs him for a job, and Jimmy gives him a very non-committal answer, which isn't an outright no, but it's probably 90% of a no. But off camera, Richie must have told Tiff that it was a firm offer, as she thanks him over the dinner table for offering Richie a job. Despite the fact that Uncle Jimmy seems pretty horrible most of the time, we see a nice side of him when he covers for Richie and plays along that he has offered him a job. Because we know in the up-to-date timeline that Richie ended up back at the restaurant, this job can't possibly have worked out well for him, but at least on this particular day, he had the chance to fulfil his potential. Though obviously he didn't find any sense of purpose down this avenue, or he wouldn't have ended up back at the start of the season questioning what he was doing in his life with Carmi in the basement of the restaurant. But the next time we see Richie in this episode is when he's trying to calm Mikey down when he's throwing forks at Uncle Lee. All the way through this episode, Richie has been trying to smooth things out and keep all the warring factions calm and happy, but there's just too much stress and aggravation in one place for him to be able to make any difference. Episode 7 is one that's really dedicated to Richie, and it focuses on him spending time learning at one of the best restaurants in the world. Kami's arranged for him to go there to get some experience, and to begin with, Richie thinks it's some sort of punishment. He has to start by shining forks, which he thinks is beneath him. This isn't a surprise, though, as Richie thinks a lot of things are beneath him. He shines the forks anyway, but when he shows a lack of interest in his job, Garrett, the man supervising him, takes him outside and has a talk with him about how special the restaurant is, and every single person working there has to make everything just right or the whole thing collapses. Garrett's words really cut through to Richie, when he tells him to respect the staff, the diners, and to respect himself. The bit about respecting himself seems to particularly resonate, as that's something he'd been struggling with for a long time, and it may be the root of his problems. Then we see Richie telling Tiff that he's got tickets for Taylor Swift for him and his daughter, and also spare that he tries to offer to Tiff. She sees straight through his offer and instead tells her that she's now engaged to Frank. This is the guy that Richie asked Claire about in episode 5 when he met her at the end of the episode and seemed crestfallen when Claire said that he was great. Richie tells her that the engagement is great news, but it's quite obviously devastated. This seems like the kind of bad news that might be enough to derail Richie's opportunity at this great restaurant, but thankfully it goes the other way and he throws himself into his job. He's taken off forks and put in a suit. Garrett talks him through how the restaurant operates, and it's like a military operation which Richie looks completely baffled by at first but as time goes by, he gets into the rhythm of the place. The turning point comes when Richie overhears some diners talking about how they've not had a Chicago-style deep dish pizza during their visit to the city, and Richie passes this along to the kitchen, and they prepare a special surprise dish, using a pizza from a nearby pizza place called Pequod's. Bringing delight to the diners' faces lights a fire in him, and it's clear that this spark is what he's been looking for. Garrett has another chat with Richie, but this time it's more as equals, and Garrett tells him about how he doesn't do this job because he eventually wants to be a chef, but because he loves carrying out acts of service. Then there's a sad scene, where Richie calls Kami to tell him that he knows that he sent him to the restaurant to get rid of him. Kami's too busy with the restaurant's gas problems to talk to him properly, so doesn't actually talk to him about the real reason he sent to him, and the conversation ends unsatisfactorily. It shows that Richie obviously thinks Kami doesn't want him around. It's sad, really, as the week there has obviously been inspirational to him, but the reason for him being there, in his mind, is a manoeuvre by Kami to get him out of the restaurant. From the outside, it seems like a kindness to try and help him learn and improve himself but I think Richie's too caught up in his own issues to see this. When Richie goes in for his last shift at the restaurant, he bumps into the head chef, Chef Terry, and they spend time peeling mushrooms and chatting. During this chat, we find out that Richie sees Kami's mum as a bit more of a real mother to him than his actual one, explaining why he's seen as a cousin to Kami, even though they're not related. Chef Terry is called away, but her parting comment is to tell Richie that Kami believes in him. 
At the start of episode 8, we see that Richie now wears suits rather than tatty old t-shirts with the restaurant's old name on them. This shows that he's not clinging to the past anymore, and he's now looking towards the future. The first thing that he says to Kami is that he gets it, which is his way of saying that he's now on board with what Kami wants to do, which is also an admission that he wasn't before, which is obvious to everyone else, but I'm not sure Richie knew how much of a barrier it was to Kami's plan to change things, particularly in the first season. Richie then goes to apologise to Shrugger for his earlier behaviour. It's a good apology, heartfelt and specific, and he lays out how he wants them to work together in a constructive way. It kind of makes sense of why he was so angry earlier in the season too. He wanted to be taken seriously, but he was sort of a ridiculous character. Now he's behaving in a serious and grown-up way, he's actually getting the things he wants. Respect and fair treatment from people around him. Shrugger agrees to give him a chance, starting by interviewing the front of house staff. At the interviews we see how Richie's now thinking on a different wavelength, where he's turned an app him the wrong way to test the candidates to see if they'll correct it. He's now thinking deeply about how to make the restaurant succeed. We also see this in the care that he takes in setting out the tables at the end of this episode. In the ninth episode, we see Richie and Sugar looking over the bookings for the first month of the restaurant. But it's not awful, but it is slightly worrying. Rather than getting stressed about it, Richie is the voice of reason, calming Sugar's worries and telling her that it will be alright. This is very different from the role Richie took at the start of the season, where his influence on every problem in the restaurant was similar to pouring petrol onto a fire. Then we see Richie giving an inspirational talk to the front of house staff before their dress rehearsal night, and it's really good. He makes a bit of a mess of some of the phrases he uses, but it's obviously he really cares about making the restaurant special. He wants everyone working there to have a sense of pride in their work. Richie then has a lovely scene with Fag, where he helps him get ready for his first night working in the front of house. Rather than squabbling with him and trying to build up his own self-esteem by belittling Fag, he's actually being kind and reassuring him. He tells Kami how Fag's changed and he's almost grooming him, like a cat or one of those monkeys that picks flies off their monkey friend. It's a complete turnaround from the constant bickering we saw from the two of them earlier in the season and the bulk of the changes come from Richie's changing mindset. Episode 10 is really like the second part of episode 9, as the service starts on the friends and family night. We get to see Richie circulating his way around the restaurant, chatting with the diners, and applying the things he learned about service in episode 7, but also applying his own personality and style to it too. It's obvious that he's enjoying his work and is pleased to be there, which is definitely something he would have said about Richie in the earlier episodes of The Bat. An example of how Richie's now working on a different level is when he's talking about drinks with Sydney's dad, he tells him that drinks are coming, and her dad replies he doesn't drink alcohol. Rich has researched him and already knows this, and Fack rolls up with a trolley full of soft drinks that have been prepared specially for him. As is nearly always the case in episodes of The Bear, things get stressful in the kitchen, but unusually, Richie isn't the one increasing the stress levels. He's actually smoothing things out and solving problems. He's calm, assured, and looking ahead for where the issues are coming before they arise. It's just about the only one keeping it together. The pinnacle of Richie's season arrives when Kami gets stuck in the walk-in fridge, the orders are backing up, and the kitchen is starting to become overwhelmed. Richie steps up, taking off his suit jacket and taking over Kami's job in the kitchen, and helping to get all the orders out. While Kami is stuck in the fridge having a breakdown, Richie leads the turnaround in the kitchen, and gets everything moving in the right direction. He's positive, enthusiastic, keeps communicating with everyone all the time, and makes a great job of it. It's so nice to see how much he's changed and how he so obviously found his purpose. In all the chaos for the kitchen, despite everything going crazy behind the scenes, Richie still manages to do something special for Uncle Jimmy. He made a throwaway reference in episode 6 of how chocolate bananas always remind him of his father. Bear in mind this was a flashback episode from five years ago, and presumably that hasn't been mentioned since. But Richie has remembered this conversation, and by making this sentimental dish for Jimmy, he draws a quiet gasp from the otherwise reserved man, proving Richie's commitment to exceptional service and the impact it can have. Richie provides a useful counterpoint for Kami's low point at the end of this season. When Kami has sent Claire Bear away in tears, Richie confronts him about it, and they have an argument through the fridge door. Things really escalate when Richie calls Kami Donna, his mother's name, meaning to say that he's behaving with the same kind of unhinged and destructive energy that his mother specialises in. Kami responds by acting in an aggressive and destructive manner, lashing out at Richie with words, trying to say the harshest thing he can. Richie tells Kami that he should just try and let something good happen to him, but Kami isn't listening to him because he's too angry. Kami calls Richie a leech, and says that he should have just cut him loose. Richie matches the energy of Kami's anger, but the words he responds with are completely different. He tells him that he loves him, and Kami replies by saying that it's just that he needs him, rejecting the idea that Richie's around for anything other than just what he can exploit Kami for, rather than genuine affection. The last shot of the season we see of Richie is him outside the restaurant smoking a cigarette on his own. It's hard to know exactly what's going through his mind at this moment. No doubt he's processing the argument he's just had with Kami, possibly also the hectic night of the restaurant too, and the newfound sense of purpose that he has. There's a fire behind his eyes that definitely wasn't there at the start of the season, and the sadness that has always been present with him seems to have lifted for now too. I think Richie's character had the most interesting character development over the course of season two. 
Kami still had the most screen time, and the other characters still had other things to do, but Richie was the one that I enjoyed watching the most. During season one, he was pretty much the antagonist, the miserable stick in the mud, who tried to block Kami's ambitions and wanted things to stay the same as they were so he could respect his dead friend's memory. It sounds a bit cheesy to say it, but Richie really went on a journey this season. He started off in a bad place, and we saw him go on the hero's journey kind of quest to improve himself, battle his demons, and come out of it a changed and better person. I think the writers have left room for more Richie stories in future seasons, with his personal life still a bit of a mess, and the steps he's made forward able to fall backwards at any moment. But for now, it's nice to have watched a character start in a bad place and finish in a better one. I think the second season of The Bear needed Richie's story, because Kami's story arc was fairly hard to watch, as he struggled to juggle opening the restaurant, having a normal relationship with Claire Bear, and wrestling with the memories of his past. It all came crashing down for Kami in the final episode in the fridge, and even took his frustration out on Richie too. So giving a secondary character like Richie a more optimistic and happy storyline was a consolation when he saw Kami suffering with his personal issues for a fair bit of the other scenes. Richie's quest to find his purpose also gave an excuse for episode 7, which was a bit like a spin-off episode in one of the world's best restaurants. It also gave us another perspective on the world of the bear, and added some context to both Richie's character, but also the world of fine dining that the bear restaurant is aiming to sit within. I could make similar videos to this one about several other characters in season 2 of the bear, but I think Richie was most deserving because his journey through the season was most interesting. He started off in a bad place, got worse for a while, then went through a period of struggle, and through it found a sense of purpose and meaning that he wasn't expecting to find, and that led to a growth and satisfaction in him that meant he blossomed as a character in the later episodes. Despite being in his mid-40s, it was like a coming-of-age story, and I really enjoyed watching it. My favourite line from Richie in this season of The Bear is the one that he says twice in episode 5, I'm not like this because I'm in Van Halen, I'm in Van Halen because I'm like this. What he means when he says this line is that working at the Bear restaurant isn't the reason that he's a bit bonkers, it's the other way around, and that he's worked there so long because he is a bit bonkers. Like a lot of the best writing, it's working on a couple of different levels, because it's just funny when he's saying that he's got a rockstar mentality, and that's why he's suitable to work in the environment that he's in. But it's also a good line, because it reveals a lot about Richie's mindset. He's saying that he's a bit unhinged, and that's why he's thriving in the environment that he's in. He's like he's saying that he's a feature, not a bug. So while people may complain about him, he's actually the right person for the environment that he's in. This really shows that Richie's old attitudes are holding him back, He's attached some unhealthy ideas that were stopping him from making progress, despite the fact that he made it clear at the start of the season that he wanted to find his purpose. Richie's talking about a book to Kami in the scene in the basement of episode 1, the one about a dude with no skills or personality, who watches trains, who gets ditched by his group of friends. The book he's referring to is a book called Color of Sakuru Tasaki and His Years of Pilgrimage by Haruku Murakami. It might seem a bit too coincidental that Richie's reading a book about a man without a sense of purpose, who is drifting through life, when this is a problem that he's facing, but I think it makes sense that he's looking for stories that match his current situation. Richie mentions that the character in the book has no personality, he just watches trains. In episode 7, the one that really focuses on Richie, there are lots of shots of trains in between the scenes. I have a feeling this is a callback to this reference, making the comparison between Richie and the man in the story. Another book that Richie reads in this season is one called Unreasonable Service by Will Guadera, a man that was at the helm of Madison Park for 11 years and helped it become known as the best restaurant in the world through his dedication to over-the-top hospitality. The scene where Richie overhears diners talking about wanting a Chicago-style deep-dish pizza and then rushing out to get one is very similar to an anecdote in this book about Guidera overhearing a diner wanting a dirty water hot dog from the streets of New York and him rushing out to get one and serving it out from the kitchen there. Taylor Swift has a significant role for Richie in this season. He says to his daughter that he loves her and he loves Taylor Swift too, but he needed a little break. Then later on we see him asking Uncle Jimmy for Taylor Swift tickets. And in episode 6 we see Tiff in a Taylor Swift t-shirt. And in episode 7 we find out that he managed to get three Taylor Swift tickets. Presumably from Uncle Jimmy. But Tiff won't go with him because she's engaged to Frank now. It's a love story by Taylor Swift that Richie's singing along to in his car at the turning point of episode 7. Which is really a turning point in his life as he finds his groove and starts to really love working at the fancy restaurant. I feel a little bit worried for Richie's character in the next season of The Bear as he's had such a lot of growth and we left him in a relatively happy place professionally that it seemed likely that he's going to be downhill from here. He's not that dramatically interesting to have characters just happily doing their jobs well and thriving, so there's got to be some sort of obstacle in the way for him. Maybe it'll be whether he can stay committed to his new mindset and attitude when there are temptations for him to slip back to his old and more destructive ways. Or it could be that Richie's story for next season focuses more on his relationship with his daughter, or his ex Tiff. It's obvious that he's not over that relationship, and was desperately disappointed when he found out that she was engaged to her new partner. Maybe Richie cleaning up his act and becoming a better person professionally might make her ex consider her decisions. That might be an interesting direction for things to go. 
There's also the relationship between Kami and Richie to deal with, as they had a huge argument in the final scene together in the last episode. Will they patch things up, or will there be babble between the two of them? Kami's on a self-destructive path at the moment, and Richie wants to help him out of it, but it seems like Kami is determined to avoid that help and spiral out of control anyway. It may be that Richie has a role in supporting his friend and helping him through his issues. This has been my video all about Richie's character development in Season 2 of The Bear. At the time of publishing this video, my channel sat on 923 subscribers, and I've been trying to get to 1000 for a little while now. So if you enjoyed watching and want to find out when I publish our next video, please help me get a little closer to my goal by hitting subscribe. It will mean a lot to me. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.